All right, I recorded another video a little while ago uh, basically showing how to send periodic emails to people based on dates in a SharePoint list. So in that scenario, it was you've got a list of new hires with their hire date and you want to send an email at their one month, two month, three month, four month, five month, six month, um, you know, after each month after their date of hire to their manager to have them submit a feedback form. Um, and the way I did that, I, I still stand by that as being sort of the most flexible way or the most uh, scalable way because we used a uh, an array of, you know, for each month with the particular date. So take a look at that video. But I wanted to show sort of a simpler way to approach it because sometimes when you're dealing with that, you know, dealing with arrays and data types and whatnot, it can get a little confusing. So I kind of wanted to show the most basic, simple way to do this, um, and but show how you can do it in a way that it's still somewhat scalable, still allow you to to modify this flow to meet a wide variety of, of circumstances. So in this scenario, uh, I've got a list of SharePoint sites, uh, each entry here has a, the title is the URL of the site. The site name column is the title of the site or the name of the site. Uh, we have a, a person column, a single select person column, which is the owner of that site uh, quota. And then we also have a review date column. And this is basically uh, kind of the idea here is that I want to notify people one month before their site is due for review and we're going to assume that every site requires an annual review and renewal process. Um, so I'm going to show how to how to send an email at one month, but then I'll show how to easily expand that to to send it at two months, three months, four months, etc. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward. But I'm going to jump over uh, just like the other flow. I'm going to start with a recurrence flow or a recurrence trigger. Uh, and I've already set this flow up, so I know that it works. I'm just going to kind of walk through rather than building it with you. I'm going to show you how it's built and point out the things that I think are going to be relevant and important to, to, to notice along the way. Uh, so first off, whenever you use this recurrence trigger, uh, be sure to open it up, click edit, and then show advanced options. Make sure that the time zone is set to whatever your local time zone is, just so that it's going to fire when you expect it to because the default here is going to be pacific time and unless you're in that time zone then you this might this flow is going to fire at some time that you're not anticipating it to um, so i'm setting this to eastern time which is my local time zone and setting it at 6 a.m six o'clock and obviously it's set to an interval of one frequency day. So every one day at 6 a.m. this flow is going to fire and go through the motions. All right. Uh, now, the, the only other action, I, well, I've got other actions here, but I have a, a scope. And if you haven't seen my other videos where I use scopes, uh, scopes are really great, not just for kind of keeping your flows organized and easy to view, but also for allowing you to reuse those those chunks of, of uh, actions. So in this case, we've got a scope, which I called scope one month, because that's our standard, you know, we're going to start out with just dealing with one month uh, of notice, and then I'll show how to expand this very easily to also get two months, three months, etc. So the first thing I have in this scope inside of here is a compose action, where I'm composing the time interval and I just named it time interval one month and the input is one. So the number one, that means I want one month ahead. Now in the next action I have is an add to time action. So you'll find this in as part of the date and time connector. And basically this is going to take three input. Yeah, three inputs. So a base time an interval, which is the number of units and then a time unit, which is the unit. Uh, so just kind of working from the bottom to the top, we can see that the time unit is month. The interval is set to the output of that compose action. So whatever number I put in there, that's the number that will be inserted here. And then the base time, uh, I'm using a couple of 
uh, expressions here. So I'm using the UTC now expression, which is going to return the current date and time in UTC. Uh, but just to be sure that I'm dealing, that I'm getting the current local time, I'm wrapping that in the convert from UTC action to say can take the current UTC time uh, and convert it to my local time just to be 100% sure that it's going to get the date that I expect it to. Um, all right, so that's our compose, there's our add to time, and this is going to serve as a filter. So it's basically in the next action, the get items action, we are looking at my site management site, the sites list, uh, and then in the advanced options here, um, by the way, I'm using the experimental features in Power Automate, so if your get items action looks a little different, um, then that's why. Uh, but if I click on this little advanced mode, it's going to allow me to, to view the filter query just as you would in the old, the non-experimental interface. Uh, so here, we're basically saying the review date uh, retrieve those items from that list where the review date is equal to and then we've got single quotes and inside the single quotes an expression another expression this time we're taking the output of that add to time action and we're formatting it in the form of four digit year dash two digit month dash two digit day why are we doing that well that's that's the format that SharePoint is going to store those date only values. So I want to be sure that I'm comparing apples to apples. So we need to get the timestamp or the, the date stamp really that we're looking for in the same format that so that we can compare it properly to the date value that's stored in that those items in that SharePoint list. Uh, so that is that. So basically when this runs, it's going to retrieve those things where the uh, the review date is equal to one month from today. Uh, and then within this apply to each, because this is a get items plural action, it's going to return or it could return more than one item because there could be more than one site. If I look at my list, we'll see that there are actually two where the review date is July 7th, one month from today. So this get items is going to produce an array or a list of values even if it only matches one it's still going to be formatted as an array it'll just be an array of one item so we still need this apply to each loop because that's what you need to iterate through or basically process each item an array is a list so to process each item in that list you need this apply to each um, action or container. Now within the apply to each we can see that this is working on the outputs of that get items one month. Um, the body slash value, kind of important to get that. Uh, and then within that we are getting a user profile. So we're just getting the user profile of the owner email. Now owner is a person column person columns are complex columns they contain multiple properties one of those properties is the email uh, which is what you can use to get that user's property so owner email is just going to be the email address of the person uh, and then in the send an email action now I'm using the outlook send an email action um, and this is optional but I've, I've Basically, I've, I've learned that there, it's, it's generally better to not send these emails from me, from my personal mailbox. So whenever possible, I you know, use a shared mailbox. In this case, site management is a team site, so as there is a group mailbox associated with it, uh, I had an admin give me, an exchange to admin that is, give me send as permission for that group mailbox so that when I send these emails or when the flow sends these emails it's actually sending them from that site management mailbox uh, so that's going to be important because then when people reply it's not coming to me it's going to go to that mailbox and all of the other people involved in site management will be able to see it uh, but within that 
send email action. I just have a very simple subject, site review reminder, where I'm saying, dear, given name is the first name that's coming out of that get user profile action. Uh, and then I'm saying that the SharePoint site below is due for review on, and I'm using another expression, uh, basically just to take the output of that uh, review date. Uh, I'm sorry, the the yes, the the review date for the current item and format it in the form of this capital D, which is the think of that as a formal format where it says you know instead of saying. Uh, you know, Wednesday, June seventh. It'll or instead of saying six seven twenty twenty three, it'll say Wednesday, June seventh, twenty twenty three. So it spells it out in nice, pretty language, uh, makes it a little more clear that what day of the week it is, etc. So that's when it's due for review, and then I've included the site name and the title or URL in this case, inside of that the parentheses there. So that's all I want to do. And then I'll also set the reply to just to be 100%. Setting the send as to be site management should be enough, but I just like to be sure and set the reply to be the same thing. And this, because it's a one month, I'm going to make this a high importance email. Uh, so basically I'll just hit save there. And we can then run this flow. back and because it is a schedule flow I could just wait for it to run but I can also run it manually so let's do that run it click done and then if we look one of the two people who's going to get that email is Peter so I'm going to jump over to uh, Peter's profile here and his mailbox and there we go there's my site review reminder the SharePoint site below is due on Friday June July 7th etc. And there's the name of the site and the URL uh, and some other little text there that I forgot to clean out, but it's not important. Uh, so that's basically it. So now if I want to expand this, so that works great. It's great for the one month, but now I want to expand it because I also want to notice five people two months ahead. How do I do that? Uh, and this is where the kind of the benefit of using scopes really pays off. So if I go into the edit mode here again, and I just simply copy this scope and then I can add a new step and paste that scope in. Now it'll say scope one month two because it's a duplicate of that. So I'm just going to rename this to scope two months. And then within that, you'll notice that all of the actions are going to have that same scenario where it just puts the number two after it. Now, I typically like to keep my flows clean. I like to rename actions and all that. Uh, and I could go through and do that. But in this scenario, that is going to be a little more complicated. So I'm trying to keep this real simple. So we're just going to basically let it fly. All we need to do is open up this compose action here. Um, and change that from a one to a two and hit save and then I'll go back and run the flow again once it finishes saving and let's run this and what we'll see is that obviously Peter is going to get the notice because it was one month for him but if I go to Robert he was the owner of the other one of the other sites there so let me just refresh his mailbox here and we should see momentarily that he also gets the email there is that site review reminder saying the SharePoint site below when it finishes loading here so there we go so that's the that it will it's due for review on August 7th now this is sent with high importance that's one of the other things I meant to, to, to change uh, so when it's two months out, maybe you don't want it to send with high importance. You just want it to be normal. So we can simply edit that again and go into the two-month scope. Now, this 
method also allows you to sort of tailor the text in those individual emails. So maybe the one month you want the language to be more specific or urgent, but in two months, three months, etc., you want it to be, you know, less severe. So just sort of like, hey, just be aware this is coming, deal with it before it gets urgent. Uh, but in this case, I want to go into the two month and just set it from high to normal, hit save. Uh, and there you go. So, and you can just continue, basically, if you want to be at monthly intervals, you could simply copy the scope again, change it, uh, or copy, paste it, and then just change that composed time interval from two to three or four or five, whatever it is. Um, now, this is technically a more complicated flow, or, or I should say more um, time-consuming flow to run because it's running a bunch of separate actions, whereas the other way we did it with the array it's sort of being a little more efficient. We've got sort of a smaller, uh, it's, it's iterating the same steps over and over for that array. Here we're actually executing multiple sets of steps. Um, so from a performance standpoint, the array method is a little more efficient. This is a little less efficient, but unless you're talking about hundreds, thousands of these, these list items, it's kind of a wash. It doesn't really matter. Um, but there you go. This is just another way to, to kind of do the same thing um, in a sort of equally scalable way, uh, but a slightly less efficient from a performance standpoint way. So hopefully this was helpful. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to throw those into the comments down below and uh, have a great day.